Shout out to Tyler, everybody. Greetings. Greet you in the name of Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, and his son Yachim Meshiaka, and the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kodoshi. We bless you all, and we thank you for coming to our, our lesson today at Hebrew Readers Church. Uh, we hope you all enjoy it. We hope it's edifying, and this um, this Shabbat we will be going into the into the twelve tribes of Israel. So um, from where they were during the time period when we were in Jerusalem, going into the time of current day. Um, so we have a, another segment of lessons that's going to be coming after this one as well, going into the 12 tribes. Um, so we hope you all enjoy it. Um, I'm your brother, Zach Waff, and anybody who's new um, to the channel. And this is your brother. Kasafo. Ciao with the challenge. So we hope everybody doing well and um Kafi, you got anything that you wanna add? Um yeah. Just praise I have. Thank you all for your prayers. Glad to be here with you all. And uh may I have prosper everybody in this journey. And may everybody remember to keep joy. Keep joy in the midst of these trials. All right? So starting with the uh scattered Israelites in the four corners of the earth. This lesson here is more so understanding what area is the four corners of the earth pertaining to. Interestingly enough, going into the Israelites, this lesson will kind of touch on what's going to come in the end times pertaining to the Israelites. Starting with Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20 and 26, we can see that through our sins, Ahaya had foretold that we would be scattered throughout the world. If you, if you have the time, you can read Deuteronomy chapter 31 and 32 to get the fuller story on that. But we're going to focus on these two verses just to get into it here, please. Deuteronomy 32 and 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be, for they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. So we see our unbelief is what led us away from Allah. When you read uh, Isaiah chapter 59, I believe it tells how that uh, is for our sins that has separated us from our Allah and caused them not to hear our prayers. Right? And hence we've seen we've been scattered throughout the world and been taken down through our iniquities and the scriptures help us understand that it's Ahaya's hand that was upon us it's Ahaya who did it to us for our sins uh, can you read verse 26 please i said i will scatter them into corners i will make the remembrance of them to cease from among men so we see it's Ahaya who's hidden us and the scriptures Ahaya tells how he kills he makes alive all things are in his hand. So us being not knowing who we are and whatnot, this is Ahaya's doing for our iniquities, causing us to fall away. Our sins have separated us from him that we don't know him, nor know who we are. In the Roman Empire, the dispersion and captivity has only furthered the agenda of causing our remembrance to cease and scattering us throughout the world especially after 70 AD and onward, after the destruction of Jerusalem. And this was as the prophecies had foretold. Luke 21 and 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there we see, according to the scriptures, the Israelites, after that time, that destruction came in 70 AD, you wouldn't find the Israelites in Jerusalem. Jerusalem would be trodden of the Gentiles. Rather, the Israelites would be scattered into all nations. And during this, and the prophecies showed, even from the times of Enoch, that this scattering, all the Israelites would be given over to apostasy, would be an unrighteous generation. Can we read Enoch chapter 93, verse 8? And nine, please. All right. And after that, in the sixth week, 
all who live in it shall be blinded. Now, this was telling of, this is in Yache's time, right? So people were already blinded. As even we know, Yache said, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind, right? And they were blinded from the truth of the gospel, which was in the face of Yache Christ, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll continue, please. And the hearts of all of them shall allahimlessly forsake wisdom. Right. And in it, a man shall ascend. And that was Yache, right? And at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire. And the whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed. There we see it was prophetically shown that Jerusalem, the temple would be destroyed as they did in 70 AD. And the chosen root would be dispersed. And we were scattered from that time. The scattering really increased. Yes, we had already started being scattered from the Assyrian captivity, the northern kingdom being taken into the land of Assyria and the land of the Medes. Then you had the Babylonian captivity where Jer the inhabitants of Jerusalem being taken to Babylon. And eventually, by the time of the Persian captivity, they spread into what was the known world at that time, the Persian Empire, 120 provinces from Ethiopia to India of the Persian Empire. That's why you would find the Israelites in the book of Acts from all the majority of the places of the known world under heaven. Now, as after the temple got destroyed, as was prophesied in Enoch, then we really got sent out everywhere. From And as you all many have known from sub-Saharan Africa, the transatlantic slave trade, then you have the 10 tribes that had left at some point earlier on, before Jerusalem got sacked, they had left and went to the um, Americas and the islands of the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, and Atlantic Ocean, and the Caribbean. So you can see how the prophecies foretold how these things will come. And it goes on to say in uh, verse 9 of Enoch uh, 93, please. And after that, in the seventh week, shall an apostate generation arise. And many shall be its deeds, and all its deeds shall be apostate. Now, it's interesting enough. It shows scripture that after that dispersion, so this is after transatlantic slave trade and all these things, it would be an apostate generation. We've been dispersed, and here we are in lawlessness, contrary to Allah, according to scripture. Hence, if you find the Israelites, wherever they are throughout the world, they're mixed. You might find some practices of the ancient customs, like maybe they still do eight-day circumcision, yet they engulfed in idolatry throughout the world. You want the definition of apostate? Sure, please. Uh, apostate is a person who renounces a religious or politician belief or principle. Objectively, it's abandoning a religious or politician belief or principle. That's interesting because it shows we forsook the covenant. Right. We will have nothing to do with the righteousness of our fathers, the commands of our Allah. Um, we would establish our own righteousness, actually, as we have done, as Paul foretold we would do in Romans chapter 10, because the northern kingdom, they went to establish their own statutes. And then the southern kingdom, where we live in evidence, we've seen what we've established in sub-Saharan Africa and even in Europe during the time of the Holy Roman Empire, what the Israelites are doing. So, and these prophecies of being apostate came, brings us up to our times to this day. And by Ahia's grace in his love for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's going to gather the remnant of Israel and the scattered of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And we read uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 12, please. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Uh, this is a key verse to understand. What area is this four corners of the earth? 
because this is essential to know, seeing as though this is where the dispersed and the scattered are going to be gathered from. According to the precept, that four corners of the earth is the original allotment of the sons of Noah given to them after the flood. And the precept that helps understand this is the book of Jasher, chapter 10, verse 2. And when Ahiah had scattered the sons of men on account of their sin at the tower, behold, they spread forth into many divisions. Right. And all the sons of men were dispersed into the four corners of the earth. That's why the places of Isaiah 11.11 11 are within the allotments of the sons of Noah, not the Americas, nor the islands of the Indian Ocean, nor the islands of the Pacific Ocean, nor the islands of the North Atlantic or South Atlantic Ocean or the Caribbean because the sons of men were dispersed into the four corners of the earth which did not include any of those aforementioned places. Can we read Isaiah chapter 11 verse 10 and 11 please to see the places where Ahai is going to be delivering from? Isaiah chapter 11 verse 10 and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Sinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. All these areas mentioned are within the allotments of the sons of Noah. Because this is where deliverance shall come from. So we see the Israelites were scattered throughout all the world. They were even scattered to the four winds of heaven. Yet, Ahia is calling them to come back and get to the places that he had appointed for them within these time frame, as we mentioned before, the 1260 days of preaching of the true gospel. To be particular, he's going to gather them back to this area and he's going to save them a second time. That four corners of the earth was split among the sons of Noah. And we're going to take a look at that to confirm scripturally what the four corners of the earth was referring to. From Jasher chapter 10 verse 2, which showed that they were went into the four corners of the earth to help understand Isaiah chapter 11 verse 12. The same four corners of the earth that he's referring to. Can we start at Genesis chapter 10, verse 32, please? These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations and their nations. And by these were the nations divided into the earth after the flood. Since by Noah's children that the earth was divided. Now let's look in Jubilees chapter 8, verse 8 to 11, and verse 18 to 20, please. Jubilees chapter 8, verse 8. And in the second year thereof, she bare him a son, and he called his name Peleg. For in the days when he was born, the children of Noah began to divide the earth amongst themselves. For this reason, he called his name Peleg. So there we see the name Peleg has to do with the sons of men dividing the earth amongst themselves. Can you continue, please? Verse 9. And they divided it secretly amongst themselves. And told it to Noah. And it came to pass in the beginning of the 37th Jubilee that they divided the earth into three parts for Shem and Ham and Japheth, according to the inheritance of each. In the first year, in the first week, when one of us who had been sent was with them. Now you see, it was an angel there who gave the allotments for Noah to his children. And he called his sons, and they drew nigh to him they and their children and he divided the earth into the lots which his three sons were to take in possession and they reached forth their hands and took the writing out of the bosom of noah their father all right so we're going to look at the scriptures to see that the places that the sons of men would inhabit that they were scattered into after the flood are africa europe including the UK and all Asia and the islands of the Mediterranean Sea and the Middle East, of course. 
we're gonna go through this and as you all know we have on the website as we upload the uh, PDFs we encourage you all to download this PDF so you can see the modern locations that the scriptures are referencing to take the time for yourself if you like to see the allotments of the sons of Noah all right starting with the land of Shem Jubilees chapter 8 verse 12 and verse 18 to 21 please Jubilee chapter 8 verse 12 and there came forth on the writing of Shem's lot in the middle of the earth which he should take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons for the generations of eternity from the middle of the mountain range of Rapha that's the Himalayas the Kunlun Shan and the Tian Shan mountains okay from the mouth of the water from the river Tina that's the Ganges River so you go from the Himalayas and the Ganges River and you start from there this is where Shem's lot starts that's right South China this is at the edge of India okay continue please and his portion goes towards the west through the midst of the river and it extends till it reaches the water of the abyss out of which the, this river goes forth and pours its waters into the sea Miat. the sea Miat is the sea of bengal which is the indian ocean so you can see all india going straight across bringing you over to the persian gulf and the red sea all that area going straight to the west this is all a lot of shem all right continue and this river flows into the great sea that's the Mediterranean. And all that is toward the north is Japheth. So north of the Himalayas and north of the Ganges River is all Japheth's land. Right? Continue. And all that is toward the south belongs to Shem. Verse 18. And Noah rejoiced that this portion came forth for Shem and for his sons. And he remembered all that he had spoken with his mouth in prophecy. For he had said, Blessed be Ahaya Elohim of Shem, and may Ahaya dwell in the dwelling of Shem. And it's interesting because going from the Ganges and Himalayas all the way to the Great Sea, which is the Mediterranean, that brings you right there near the Sinai Peninsula, showing that whole middle region belongs to Shem. That's the actual middle of the earth. Continue, please. Verse 19. And he knew that the Garden of Eden is the Holy of Holies. And the dwelling of Ahaya in Mount Sinai, the center of the desert, and Mount Zion, the center of the navel of the earth. These three were created as holy places facing each other. And he blessed the Alahayim of Alahayims, who had put the word of Ahaya into his mouth, and Ahaya forevermore. And he knew that the blessed portion and blessing had come to Shem and his sons unto the generations forever. The whole land of Eden and the whole land of the Red Sea. That's the Arabian Peninsula. And the whole land of the East. That's Arabia and parts of Syria and Mesopotamia. And India and on the Red right. Sea and the mountains thereof. And all the land of Bashan. And That's all in the, Israel. And all the land of Lebanon. And the islands of Kaftor. That's Cyprus. And all the mountains of Sinner. That's Mount Hermon. And Amana. That's the Amanus Mountains in Turkey. And the mountains of Ashur in the north. That's the mountain ranges in Turkey. And all the land of Elam. That's Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and Kyrgyzstan. That's the land of Elam. Uh, sir. Asher is North Iraq on the east of the Tigris River, East Turkey on the east of the Euphrates River, Armenia and Azerbaijan. And Babel? Babel is, is still Babel Iraq to this day. And Shushan? That's Shush Iran today. And Mididai? Right, that's the land of the Medes. And all the mountains of Ararat? That's still the mountains of Ararat today. And all the region beyond the sea, which is beyond the mountains of Asher, toward the north, a blessed and spacious land, and all that is in it is very good. Now he said, all the region beyond the sea, the sea referring to the Mediterranean, 
And he said, which is beyond the mountains of Asha towards the north. North of the Mediterranean is Turkey. That's the area that's being referred to there. And there we see Shem's lot. Now, going on to Japheth's lot. We didn't go into the whole lot of Shem. You can actually visit the website. There's a tab called the place of Isaiah 11 and 11 to look at those locations in particular. Uh, we'll jump to the land of Japheth because it's to the north of Shem so we can get a look at it. Let's look at Jubilees chapter 8, verse 25 to 29, please. And for Japheth came forth the third portion beyond the river Tina. That's the Ganges again, beyond the Ganges. So now we're going north of the Ganges, okay? To the north of the outflow of its waters. And it extends northeasterly to the whole region of Gog. If you go north easterly of the Ganges, that's going to bring you to China. China is the region of mountains. The word Gog means mountain. So it's a region of mountains. Hence, you see all the biggest mountains in the world in China. All right? And to all the country east thereof. That's all southeast and South Asia. Okay? And it extends northerly to the north. All North Asia. And it extends to the mountains of Quelt. And that's the Ural Mountains known today. Toward the north and toward the sea of Malu. That's the North Atlantic Ocean. So you can see how it went from northeast of the Ganges River. That's all China. And it keep going in northeasterly up to the north to the Ural Mountains. That's all Russia and uh, Finland, Sweden and all that up there. And then it goes all the way to the Sea of Maut. That brings you all the way around to the North Atlantic. That's the UK. Bring you all the way on the side by Spain. And it's interesting, the next place it mentions to help understand it. Continue reading, please. And it goes forth to the east of Gadir. Now, the east of Gadir. Gadir, that's the Strait of Cadiz today, also known as Gades, Spain. So you can see that word Gadir still maintained its ancient name until this day to see that a Japheth's lot comes all the way around to Spain and Europe. All right, continue, please. As far as the region of the waters of the sea. As far as the regions of the water of the sea. The sea is referring to the Mediterranean. Hence, you come around under Spain, go past the Strait of Cadiz, all the islands of the Mediterranean. That belongs to Japheth. All right, continue, please. And it extends until it approaches the west of Farah. As far as the Faros Islands, that's right there near Alexandria, Egypt. There's an island there called Faros Island. So you can see how that extension of the Mediterranean keeps coming until you reach right there. All right, continue, please. And it returns toward Afrag. What's known as Afrag is what we know as Turkey or Phrygia in ancient time. So it goes from there and then shoots back up towards Turkey. That's why Cyprus actually belongs to Shem, because it's within his allotment of land. Continue, please. And it extends easterly to the waters of the Sea of Miat. The Sea of Miat, again, is the Sea of Bengal and the Indian Ocean. When you go above Turkey, because remember, Turkey belongs to Shem, start extending easterly, it takes you right back over to the Himalayas and the uh, Kunlun Shan and Tian Shan Mountains. And that's all the region of Japheth. Continue, please. And it extends to the regions of the River Tina in a northeasterly direction until it approaches the boundary of its waters toward the mountain Rafa. That's Mount Everest. The mountain, the singular mountain Rafa is actually Mount Everest. And notice it said it extends in a northeasterly direction. So it goes from Turkey and goes northeasterly. doesn't go downward because we know that's the Middle Earth that belongs to Shem. So you see how the allotments were given. Continue, please. And it turns round towards the north. This is right. the land which came forth for Japheth and his sons and his portion for, of his inheritance, which he should possess for himself and his sons for their generations forever. Five great islands and a great land in the north. Those five great islands were Crete, Sicily, Corsica, Sardinia, and Cyprus. But that remember, Cyprus got given to Shem 
through the allotment. When you read Jubilee chapter 10, you see how that island got given over to Shem. Interestingly, he said, a great land in the north. Because so all Europe and Asia, that's actually one big landmass. As you can see, it truly was a great land in the north. All right, let's touch on Ham and his allotment. Can we go to Jubilee chapter 8, verse 22 to 24, please? All right. Uh, Jubilee chapter 8 verse 22 and for Ham came forth the second portion beyond the Gihon the Gihon is the Nile River okay towards the south to the right of the garden and it extends right. toward the south and it extends to all the mountains of fire now it's interesting you go from the Gihon it said it extends to all the mountains of fire there's actually a volcanic region called the East Africa Rift Zone that's what's being referred to as the mountains of fire it's a volcanic region down there it's down in like the kenya area and whatnot continue please and it extends toward the west of the sea atel the sea atel is the south atlantic ocean that's sam's lot is all africa continue and it extends toward the west till it reaches the sea of mauk and all the way to the west until it reaches the sea of mauk which is the north atlantic ocean so it goes all the way up until it reaches that same strait that separation between spain and north africa so it's encompassing the whole land of africa that sea into which everything which is not destroyed descends verse 23 and it goes forth toward the north to the limits of Gadir. And so you see how Ham's land goes all the way up to that same strait as well, but it does not go into Spain because that belongs to Japheth. All right, continue, please. And it goes forth to the coast of the waters of the sea, to the waters of the Great Sea. All right, it's his coast, all North Africa on the Mediterranean. Till it draws near the river Gihon and goes along the river Gihon until it reaches the right of the Garden of Eden. And this Continue, is the please. land which came forth for Ham as the portion which he was to occupy forever for himself and his sons unto their generations forever. So there you see the allotments of the children of Noah. Can you read verse 29 and 30, please? This is the land which came forth for Japheth and his sons and their portion of his inheritance which he should possess for himself and his sons and their generations forever. Five great islands and a great land in the north but it is cold so europe and asia is cold as it still is to this day and the land of ham is hot africa is still hot to this day <laughs> and the land of shem is neither hot nor cold all right but it is blended cold and heat and that's the middle east all the way over to india so you can see how this was the allotment this was the four corners of the earth that was referred to in isaiah chapter 11 verse 12 is europe uk asia middle east africa and the isles of the mediterranean sea and the precept that helps confirm it was Joshua chapter 10 verse 2 to understand that the four corners of the earth are the lands of shem ham and japheth the lands of the americas and the islands of the indian ocean pacific and atlantic were not included in the allotments of the sons of noah hence they are not included in the four corners of the earth and were places where mankind had never dwelt until the ten tribes went there. Can we read Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 40 to 41, please? Sure. These are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Salmaneser the king of Assyria led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. The multitude of the heathen, these are the sons of Noah, the 70 nations. They had to leave the four corners of the earth to go where mankind never dwelt, according to scripture. That's how they would get away. And sadly, the northern kingdom as the prophecy showed they would be dispersed and would be apostate and they did establish their own righteousness not submit themselves to the righteousness of Allah as romans chapter 10 verse 1 to 3 shows 
in the land of Israel, it's interesting what they did. They had to keep the commandments of the king of Israel. They had to do his form of idolatry. They, when they decided to leave the land of the heathen, they went to do their own statutes that they could not keep because in the land of Israel, they had to keep the king's commandments. So you can see how sadly, when the 10 tribes went into these other lands, they went further into idolatry, further than the idolatry they had already been practicing in the land of Israel while they were there. Can we read 2 Ezra chapter 13, verse 42, please? You might want to read verse 41 and then verse 42. I'm sorry. Second Ezra 13 to 41. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would lead the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. Notice they might keep their statutes. It didn't say they went to keep the statutes of Elohim or the statutes of their king. They went to establish their own righteousness and start their own law. Hence, you find the ten tribes in a lot of things that are not according to the covenant given to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you also find it among the southern kingdom as well, in sub-Saharan Africa and even here in the Americas and other areas in Europe and whatnot where the slaves were scattered and the Israelites had dispersed. We were unrighteous in all the places we went to, sadly. Uh, continue, please. Uh, second Ezra chapter 13, verse 43. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. Now it's interesting, if you take a map and look, you have the river Euphrates. Once you enter into the river Euphrates, that brings you into the uh, Persian Gulf or the Arabian Sea, onto the Indian Ocean, then to the Pacific Ocean, and then brings you over to the Americas. So you can see the route that the Israelites went when they left the lands where mankind had dwelt to go to a land where no man had dwelt, which were those islands of the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, the Caribbean islands, and the Americas. All right, continue, please. Verse 44. For the Most High then showed signs for them and hailed still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country, there was a great way to go, namely of a year and a half. In the same region, it's called Atherit. The Americas were known of old time to be another land. That's what Arsara actually means, another land, because it was outside of the land that were allotted to the sons of Noah. Uh, the ten tribes and the kingdom of Judah, with its inhabitants, will be recovered a second time from the places mentioned in Isaiah 11 and 11, which are within the four corners of the earth. So, and when you have the opportunity to even go read Second Edges, if you read the rest of it, you see that Ahai is gonna stay the floods again for those tribes to come back from the areas where they had went to, as we had discussed before in prior lessons. But for now, focusing on understanding that though the tribes have been scattered throughout the world, there is a deliverance to come, as it said, within the four corners of the earth in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11 and verse 12. He has not left off his mercy for our father's sake. He is calling us unto him to come out of the midst of Babylon to get to the places within the four corners of the earth mentioned in Isaiah 11 and 11 so that we may be recovered a second time as the scripture is foretold. It's interesting understanding the four corners of the earth because you see scripturally the deliverance is going to come from those areas mentioned in Isaiah 11 and 11, right? But when you look at the scriptures pertaining to Babylon, it's not so. He's telling everyone to come up out of her, flee out of the midst of her, deliver their own soul. So the scriptures also show that it's not going to be a remnant that's going to be kept if they stay in Babylon. He's calling us to come out of there and get to the places where he's going to recover his children. Can we read Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 5 and 6? Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 5. For Israel hath not been forsaken, 
nor Judah of his Alahim, of Ahiah of hosts. Though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. So this is the compassion. Ahiah loves mercy. Though we sinned against him, because for our sins we got scattered all over the world, yet he's not forsaken us. Continue. Verse 6. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. We literally have to deliver our souls from the place. We have to actually come out so that we be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of Ahiah's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. Uh, Jeremiah 50 and 8. Remove out of the midst of Babylon, and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans, and be as the he-goat before the flocks. So we literally have to remove out of the land of the Chaldeans. We have to actually leave the place. The scriptures give us, don't tell us we can stay. We actually have to remove out of the actual land. We have to leave, literally. All right? And this call is not just for the Israelites. It's for all his people of the nations, those children of Abraham by faith, the Nyache, our brethren and sisters. Jeremiah chapter 4, 51, verse 45 and 46, please. All right. Jeremiah 51 and 45. My people... Go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of Ahiah. We're constantly told to go. All right. Verse 46. And least your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. And so there's trouble to come. Hence, he doesn't want us to partake in the troubles that's going to come here, because it's going to be very grievous. Continue, please. A rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor, and violence in the land, ruler against ruler. It's interesting how he said, the rumor shall come one year, so you're going to hear about trouble that's coming. And then in another year shall come a rumor, so you're going to hear about it again, but this time the violence comes in the land. The trouble is going to start at a certain time. For those who want things to get better or the tribulation not to come, understand that Ahiah would have healed Babylon, but she's unrepentant, so we have to go. And this scripture helps for those who, there are people who would rather like, hey, well, I hope you talk about, well, hey, this is coming. The prophecy shows such and such. The war with Iran is according to prophecy. And they would say, well, I hope it don't happen, you know, or they'll say, you know, the most high, he's forgiven, you know. He can heal this place. He can bring this place back together. Ahia wanted to. He said he would have. And when we see in the scriptures what his admonition is concerning Babylon in particular is. What was that Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 9? Mm -hmm. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her and let us go every one into his own country. Ahiah is admonishing all. That's not just the Israelites. Right. That's all nations. Forsake her. She's not healed. Things are not going to get better here. Continue, please. For her judgment reacheth unto heaven, and is lifted up even to the skies. Her iniquity is coming to the full. The land of the north which is the UK and Europe and etc. Since we just learned about the allotments of the sons of Noah, right? The land of the north also will have to be left as well within the 1260 days of the two witnesses. Uh, can you read Zechariah chapter two, verse six and seven, please? Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north, saith Ahiah. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith Ahiah. He spread us everywhere. He knew what he did, and now he's calling us to come out of there. Ahiah is letting us know that everywhere we're at, we actually have to come out and get to the places that he wants us to be in, so that we may be recovered. It's him that's calling us to do so. Continue, please. Verse 7 of Zechariah chapter 2. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. Deliver thyself. We actually have to make a choice. We have to choose to be delivered. And we have to actually come out. That dwellest with the daughter of Babylon. That lets us know that daughter of Babylon is not referring to ancient Babylon in Iraq. 
This is the mother of harlots. Babylon the Great. Mystery Babylon at that. In the Americas. All right? Particularly North America. Can you read Revelations chapter 18, verse 4, please? And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. This is for all nations, because the actually came to save the world. And therefore, this call is for all to come out of Babylon. And the times are drawing near. Revelations 18 and 5, please. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Allah has remembered her iniquities. Right, so that was just uh, understanding the four corners of the earth, all within the allotments of the sons of Noah, which helps understand that deliverance for the Israelites are going to come from within that area, particularly the area mentioned in Isaiah 11 and 11, as we talked about before. And this hopefully helps the Israelites understand that we do have to get to those places in Isaiah 11 and 11 to be a part of that deliverance to come, all right? And in the next lesson, I will get an opportunity to dig into the Israelites and identify them in the earth a bit more. All right, we have a couple of uh, questions and statements over here in the chat. Um, shout out to Chalam, Sister Diana. Shout out to Chalam, Brother Hanu. Um, Shout out to Tom and Brother Niger. Much appreciated. Much love towards you. Uh, shout out to Tom and Brother Johnny. Um, uh, we have a statement um, as far as apostate. He said, maybe not forsaking the covenant, rather forsaking the dogmas which bind the empty traditions. or the, the traditions of our forefathers and the, the laws and and, and the um, the fruits of the spirit is life. Um, those aren't empty traditions. Those are things that are gonna save our soul. Uh, as you see the case that our people are in right now from forsaking the covenant, from Jew to the Gentiles, Look at look at how life is today. Look at how people are operating. So you can see that everything's going in a downward spiral. So are we really doing better by being apostate and forgetting the traditions of our forefathers? Or are we doing worse? So that's the that's what you gotta ask yourself. Because our forefathers, when we were keeping the covenant, we were blessed. We weren't lacking. And we were operating in integrity and uprightness and truth. But now there's no loyalty. There's no truth in the land. Everybody does what's within their own heart. It's chaotic. So put that in question for you, dear brother. You had anything on that, Casa? Uh, one can read the forsaking of the covenant was actually pertaining to obeying Ahaya's voice to scripture and understand it wasn't about traditions in regards to the traditions of men it was about forsaking the commands of Allah I am Jeremiah chapter 11 one can read all the way up to verse 11 or the whole chapter but we'll go to uh, verse 2, Hear ye the words of this covenant, and speak unto the men of Judah, and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and say unto them, Thus saith Ahayah, Allahim of Israel, Cursed be the man that obeyeth not the words of this covenant, which I commanded your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, from the iron furnace, saying, Obey my voice, and do them according to all which I command you. So that was the covenant. To obey his voice and to do his commands so shall ye be my people and i will be your alahayim that i may perform the oath which i have sworn unto your fathers to give them a land full with milk and honey as it is this day 
So that covenant was he made a deal with us so that we would, if we would obey his voice and do his commands, he would perform the oath that he made with our fathers. And he actually said, so that, he said, that I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your father. So he's encouraging us to do it because he's righteous. He's encouraging us to do it so he can fulfill his word.